When you sign up to be an EPP, extra podcast person to Real Ghost Stories Online, you'll have access to the best ghost stories we've ever told. The oven door started slamming open and closed. And in places like this, oven doors take up entire walls. Never before had I seen such clear evidence of something non-human being in a room with me. Because it felt like somebody was here. You know, you see, I did it written in paint where you just painted. These are stories only EPP members have access to. I don't know why, but I just wonder if that scream isn't a family member that was there to claim their loved one. There was like something standing there right in the threshold of the doorway. And I was paralyzed. I couldn't breathe. It's only $5 a month when you sign up at realghoststoriesonline.com by clicking Become an EPP. There was an old lady standing at the foot of the bed, and she said she could see details and everything. You know, it just looked like an old lady standing at the foot of the bed. You'll get access to the best ghost stories and exclusive video content we've ever created. I have no doubt in my mind that it was completely supernatural. But it felt like it was in my head. Like, it didn't feel like I was hearing it. It felt like it was in my head. Become an EPP now and help keep our show on the air at realghoststoriesonline.com. Click Become an EPP. Welcome to Real Ghost Stories Online. Call in your real ghost story now at 855-853-4802 or write in at realghoststoriesonline.com. You are about to enter the world of the unknown and quite possibly the undead this is real ghost stories online that indeed it is and on today's episode of real ghost stories online a spirit attacks a man multiple times while he's at work and verbally threatens him could a ghost you come in contact with actually know things about your past three sisters find they have a blue man protecting them and a listener shares the lesson learned when he goes rummaging through drawers without permission those stories and more today on real ghost stories online tony and jenny bruski joining you once again hello is this about a blue man group ghost or something it's not <clears throat> and i thought you might go there because there's three sisters and a blue man and mm -hmm. i could see confusing three and blue for a blue man group and they're drumming on garbage lids three times no be interesting what uh, the ghost of las vegas will be uh, you know, like 30, 40 years from now. Mm -hmm. You know how now it's like, oh, it's Elvis, it's it's Sinatra. It's, you know, insert someone who uh, performed there back in, uh, you know, the the original heyday. Sure. So now what are you going to have for like ghosts once like the current generation passes on? Are we going to have like the ghost of Bobby Flay wandering through restaurants? Are we going to have, uh, you know. You have these random blue handprints <laughs> on everything. Do you remember when that used to yes. be the the advertising oh yeah mm -hmm. all over the place like celine dion is haunting caesar's palace <laughs> all of a sudden you just, you just you hear there's the titanic theme playing yeah. you know like you're just kind of wandering through the halls like what no what is that no <laughs> stop i knew you were gonna do that <laughs> it'll happen it will happen uh. siegfried and roy are they both did one die or are they both i think they're both still alive aren't I they i think they're both still alive just one is very much not able to do any a whole lot yeah oh I'm trying Pretty to think sure. what else you can have around there we've we've had stories was it the titanic exhibit there that there was the ghost stories of i know we've had some from other exhibits as well but there was one that was there for quite a while i'm trying to think if we had ghost stories from that specific one or if it was the one in in branson I don't remember anything specifically about the exhibit that was there at the Luxor. Okay. So, I don't know. Interesting. Mm -hmm. That'll be exciting, and I'm sure we'll share them with you here on a very old version of Real Ghost <laughs> Stories online. Yeah. And a very special episode will be a very old version of us. And what did you say? What did you say? Ghost. Okay, episode's over. That's going to be how it will work. Okay. Aren't you excited? An EPP 1000. 
you know. It'll probably be much further than that, actually. Yeah, it won't be that long before we're at 1,000. Yeah. Uh, so EPP, what, like three, four, five thousand? We'll be right Maybe. around there. Right? Okay. There you go. Uh, 855-853-4802 is our phone number to call into Real Ghost Stories Online to share your story with us. Of course, you can also uh, write it on the website, realghoststoriesonline.com, or electronically mail Jennifer. Uh, your stories, if you'd like to uh, record them on your smart device and then send them via the World Wide Webs. Jenny, J-E-N-N-Y, at realghoststoriesonline.com if you have that new Prodigy email service. Why did you call me Jennifer? Nobody does that unless I'm in trouble. I didn't, I'm just trying to be really formal with the World Wide Webs and all of that. Okay. So that's all. Remember Prodigy? Yeah, I do. It was like I remember like seeing like on Sunday nights on television. It was like a like a three minute advertisement. Now you can get what's called the World Wide Web. Use pro. I, I was so confused as to what the hell they were even talking about. I remember when they were trying to get you to give America Online as a Christmas gift. Do you remember that? I remember all their ads because AOL came out like right after I think mm -hmm. Prodigy, and it was still I was like, what? Huh? What is this? <laughs> My computer just had played had like orange screen and played Wheel of Fortune and, mm -hmm. and a very bad old version of Monopoly okay. and just beeped at you. So the concept of World Wide Web or even a mouse was not <laughs> in my vernacular. But anyhow, Patrick writes in, hey, Tony and Jenny, I thought I'd uh, write in for the first time because this story is definitely worth telling. But a month ago, my friends and I decided to go on a camping trip. My best friend is Navajo, so she wanted to visit her grandparents on the reservation on the trip and was a welcome, uh, a welcome break from school. When we got to the campsite, which is near but not on the reservation, we set up camp. The sun was going down, but there was still plenty of light out. While I was uh, setting up my tent, I heard a voice call out, Ricky. Only my close friends and coworkers call me Ricky, so thinking that it was one of my friends asking for help, I called back, but there was no response. I blew it off thinking that they just didn't hear me and continued setting up camp. The night from that point on went off without a hitch. After having a few drinks and telling stories around the campfire, my Navajo friend began to tell us about skinwalkers, or, oh, here's what I'm not going to do good at. You ready? Did you know that? Could you do this one? Are no. You, are you prepared for this one? Just just say or, or the Navajo word for skinwalkers. Or the Navajo word for skinwalkers, because I'm not going to get it right. There are these uh, shape-shifting spirits who can take on any form they want, and more disturbingly to me, they can mimic voices. About an hour later, we all turned in. Everyone seemingly fell asleep quickly, but I couldn't seem to get some shut-eye. I was listening to the sound of the desert when I heard two very distinct whistles cut through the night, and that was freaky. But five minutes later, I could hear something outside of the tent. Whatever it was began to shake the tent violently, almost as if it wanted to get in. The shaking was so violent that I woke my friend, but when she woke, the shaking stopped. I told her about it immediately, but she had simply gone back to sleep before I could finish. The next day I told her again, and her face went cold. That day she took us to her grandparents' house to get a blessing. Needless to say, we went home early. To this day, nothing has happened, but I sleep with headphones in. I'm too afraid of hearing those whistles again. Feel free to use this story in the podcast. I have other non-Skinwalker-related stories, but those will have to wait for another time. So if it hadn't been for hearing his nickname being called before all this happened, mm -hmm. you could write it off as, oh, he's just, you know, heard these stories and kind of it got to him. Sure. But I think there's more going on, especially when there's something shaking your tent. I mean, that may or may not be something paranormal related, but it's damn scary. Sure. I mean, the order in which it progressed was very key to that story. Yeah. As far as it becoming paranormal. Just the term skinwalkers is creepy to me. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know that probably kind of means like ghost, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's you know, skin on something that shouldn't be there walking. So I, I get it. But it's just one hell of a way to describe ghost. Yeah. It beats shadow person. It's like, it's one of the creepiest ways to describe ghost. And I love it. Mm -hmm. So thank you for, uh, for sharing that experience with us. Hi, Tony and Jenny. My name is Jack. I live in Somerset, England. I've been listening to your show since episode one. Well, thank you. My goodness. That's a long time. My wife got me an EPP membership for Christmas. It's the gift that keeps on giving. Yes, it is. 
I've been meaning to contact you about this experience before, but I find it hard to think about as it's ongoing and each time more terrifying. It's only happened three times, and I'm not sure if it's the same entity, but I fear it or them. The first time I saw him, I was around 10. I'd had trouble sleeping and decided to go downstairs for a glass of milk. At this time, I was living in Dorset with my parents, mother and stepfather, and my brother. My brother and I shared a room at the other end of the house, and my parents, whose bedroom door sat atop the stairs. Anyhow, I got to the top of the stairs and started walking down when the light in the stairwell went out. I looked at the switch and saw that it was still in the on position. I turned back, looking downstairs, standing at the bottom, looking up. Was this man? He was sheer black, darker than dark. I was a rational ten-year-old, so I thought it's my eyes adjusting to the dark. I carried on down the stairs, not taking my eyes off the shadow. He, at least, I think he was a he, started upstairs towards me. I stopped and took a few steps back. He sped up, almost charging at me. I fell and screamed. When I picked myself up, myself up off the stairs a few seconds later, he was atop the stairs, looking down before dissipating. That terrified me for years. I never saw him again until fast forward 15 years. I just started working at a factory in Bridgeport, uh, Dorset. The factor, the factory floor was on the ground floor. The canteen of the toilets were in the first with a stairwell on each end. I remember the date perfectly, September 5th of 2014. I worked evenings, 2 p.m. to 10 p.m. Two others, who we'll call Tom and Roger, and I worked this shift. Halfway through our shift at around 6.30 p.m., it was my turn to make tea, so I headed upstairs like I did every night at some point. I got to the top and looked along the corridor, the, the house and the canteen, at the other end, and saw the light flick out. Suddenly, memories of my 10-year-old self's experience came flooding back. I was filled with a feeling of dread and fear like I've never felt, as at the end of the corridor, he, or what I believe is the same entity, I had seen 15 years prior materialize in the darkness. I shouted, I'm not afraid of you anymore at the top of my lungs, even though I was literally shaking. He just stood and then turned and evaporated. My workmates ran upstairs after hearing me shout and found me shaking in the corner, white as a sheet. I told them both what happened, and they looked at me like I was mad, but still I thought to myself, ha, huh, I did it. Fast forward to two days ago, March 23rd, 2016. Once again at work in the factory, same shift, same co-workers. Normal shift routine at 6.30 upstairs to the canteen. Tea making time. I headed upstairs like every other night, walked down the corridor and into the canteen. As I walked through the door, it slammed behind me so fast it was like time sped up to the middle of the room just as I started calming down. Click out, go the lights. I'm in pitch black in a room with no windows, unable to find the door. Suddenly, that same feeling of dread and utter terror I'd felt twice before came over me. I stood shaking, trying to scream, but unable to make a sound as I hear footsteps all around me getting closer. I'm literally smashing myself against a wall, trying to make as much noise as possible to my coworkers so they hear me. Tears in my eyes, feeling so cold and desperately alone, sobbing, a 27-year-old factory-working man, manly man sobbing and throwing himself against a wall. I stopped as soon as I heard him, though. This voice, this horrible voice, right behind me, so close I could feel the chill of its breath on my back, whispered, See, boy, you'll always be afraid of me until you breathe no more. Even though it was whispered, it was deep and threatening. The last thing I remember before walking up in the canteen with a paramedic checking me over was a feeling of an ice-cold hand grabbing the back of my neck. I literally passed out from terror. The paramedic said I had had a panic attack, hyperventilated, and passed out. I learned from my co-workers later that they were on the outside of the door, unable to push it open, and were smashing into it with their shoulders, hearing me screaming and sobbing on the other side. When after I went silent, it just opened on its own. I don't know what this entity is, and I'm scared that it wants me. It will continue to terrorize me until I die. Could be a shadow person, as I've heard lots of people's stories about them. Please, please, Tony and Jenny, if, and all of your listeners, if anybody out there has any advice or has been through something similar, help me. I can't take it anymore. I don't know what to do. 
Hope you play this on your show and get my message out there. There is real evil out there, and don't trust shadow people. Thank you for listening. Jack. Is that the first time we've had a shadow person speak? Or am I just blanking out? No, I think we have had shadow people speak before. I couldn't give you a specific example, but I believe it's happened. See, and it, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. That's okay, go ahead. It just seems like it's, it, I believe when it's happened before, it's one of those times where I've made the example saying, uh, you know, see, not all shadow people are, are the same. Mm -hmm. It's not always, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, this or that where everybody assumes it's always something super dark or, or good. I mean... A lot of times the assumption is dark, and in this case, it seems fairly dark. Yeah. But, um, again, I just kind of go back with the shadow thing. I don't think they're all bad. This mm -hmm. case, it's a case-by-case -case basis, and this would be a case where it turns out to be not all that, that great. Well, and it makes you wonder why he's plaguing the same person multiple locations through a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I, I just wonder why he's attached himself to him. I don't know. Wrong place, wrong time. Is there some attraction, know. you know, to him, and not not like sexual, but you know, just some sort of attraction to him from from what he does? For I don't know, just something that is relatable. Maybe that's more of the the correct word than attraction. Right. I just don't know. How do you handle something like that? You know, the only thing that I thought of when he said he started to feel that presence was. Mm -hmm. For me, be immediately trying and visualize that white protective light sure. around you. You know, that may or may not be powerful enough to ward this off, but that might offer a little bit of protection just mm -hmm. until you're not by yourself. Because it seems like it's kind of a chicken shit, and when anybody else comes in the room, it disappears. It's just kind of praying. Yeah. Yeah. I, I guess, you know, interacting probably not the best idea. Mm -mm. Of any sort. It's probably one that's not going to go away if you ask it to. No. It's trying to be there. It's trying to cause trouble. Yeah. Well, thank you for the story. I hope this ends well for you and uh, hopefully eventually just kind of goes away. Let's uh, go to our next story. Elaine writes in, hi, Tony and Jenny. I love being an EPP. Having over 80 podcasts to listen to is awesome. Uh, now we're almost up to 100. So... Oh, here's a good question for you, Jenny. Yes. I get asked this quite a bit, and I'm always kind of just guessing. How far back are we on letters? Like, so we, I know, like, we talk about, you know, we have a lot of letters that we go through, and they go mm -hmm. through them at a first-come, first-served basis. About what, as of the point of this broadcast, which is at the beginning of June, it's about, we're about two weeks from the point of recording to it airing. Mm -hmm. The day that this is being recorded is June 8th of 2016. Where, what month are you in as far as going through letters? For the most part, because I, I look at them two different ways. Mm -hmm. There's some that I look for for our regular shows, mm -hmm. and then there's some that I, that stand out to me for our EPP episodes. Mm -hmm. Regular shows, I'm in March, into March. Okay. So I'm that far back. But if you've submitted a letter that's been used on an EPP episode, it may be more recent than that. Because okay. I tend to look for some of our longer letters, mm -hmm. the ones that have the more detail, that just tend to fit better in an EPP show. Sure. So I kind of skim ahead and look for ones that fit that criteria. Okay. As far as that goes, I'm into May on that. Okay. So that's where we're at, at those two dates. Calls are typically within the week or so. Yes. But now, one of the problems with the calls is sometimes unbeknownst to the listener who's called in, mm -hmm. the audio may not be listenable, if sure. that's even a word. Um for us to air it, it may be just too too grainy or cut in and out mm -hmm. so i kind of have to i file it but i don't necessarily use it and that's still i mean i say same week but really technically if you called in a call today it's and we were to use it it probably wouldn't hit the air for about three weeks just because of the delay in yeah. the shows so there's the answer to that because a lot of people ask did you get my letter did you get my story yeah and and if you've called in and you haven't heard your call email me and ask me about it and I can let you know if maybe it was an audio issue mm -hmm. or something else to sure. where we couldn't use it. Okay, there we go. Yeah. That answers a lot of questions. Okay. Okay, continuing on. Uh, I've even heard a few people sharing their experiences aboard the Queen Mary. I'd like to share mine. Ooh, I love these ones. I should have a, a big, uh, this is where I should have a foghorn for the Queen, for Mary. Queen Mary stories because we got the bunk bed bell. I should have a 
the last thing you need is another noisemaker. Stop it. I'm trying to, I'm trying to Kenny G it. I'm trying to do the circular the breathing. The circular breathing. You work fog. on that. You you just <laughs> knock yourself out and pass out trying to do that. Longest, longest foghorn effect ever held by Taylor Bruski. Jeez. Hey, gotta strive for something. I'll share my experience. is included in, a, in the book, A Ghost of Orange County by Victoria Gross. In February of 2008, I was attending the God Save the Queen paranormal retreat aboard the Queen Mary in Long Beach, California. During the first day of the, re the retreat, I was uh, coming out of the restroom when I spotted a woman in a beautiful wedding gown standing by the door. I could see the workmanship of the vintage gown was exquisite. The embroidery intertwined with pearls was gorgeous. Realizing I'd be late for the next retreat session, I turned and ran down the stairs when I suddenly dawned on me that I never saw arms or a head inside of the gown. Turned around and ran back up the stairs. The hallway it was now empty. At the beginning of the retreat, we were told if we saw anything we felt was paranormal to let the paranormal investigative team aboard the ship know about it. I went down the stairs and talked to the team. One of their gifted investigators followed me back to the area and was able to communicate with the ghost. He asked her, why she chose to show herself to me and was told she felt a kinship with me. We had both lost babies, and I was floored. I had lost a baby. I started to shake uncontrollably and had to leave the area. The next day, I was introduced to Vicki Gross and Barry uh, Conrad. Barry was the videographer from the uh, San Pedro haunting case by mutual friend. After first hearing of my experience from our friend, Vicki asked if they could hear about it in my own words and show them the location where it occurred. I was more than happy to do so, especially they could help me understand it. Once we arrived, Vicky told me the door I saw the ghost in front of was the door leading into the back of the chapel. I had no idea the chapel was located there. Vicky discovered the door was unlocked, so we entered the chapel. Immediately, Vicky and I felt goosebumps traveling up and down our arms. The energy in the chapel was heavy. Vicky said the ghost was sitting in the last pew. She tried to communicate with her, but once the ghost discovered her presence was known, the energy went flat. The ghost had vanished. Vicky later told me that others had reported seeing a headless ghost bride in the same area. To this day, her identity is unknown. For me, I don't think she's truly headless or armless. I feel she hadn't fully materialized when I saw her. Thanks again for creating an outlet for people to share their experiences. Elaine. I wondered after reading this story, you know how sometimes we kind of get what we quote unquote call downloads from ghosts where we just immediately know what the story is of that presence. Sure. At least some sensitive people do. It made me wonder if maybe they can't do the same thing because it knew some of her memories. It knew that she had lost a child. Mm -hmm. And it makes you wonder how much can they take from us? I don't know. And that's kind of a scary thought. Sure. If it can know what your memories are, it can then know what your fears are. And is that a human ghost thing, or is that something that only things that were not human have the ability to do that are looking human or, you know? And see, I don't know. Yeah. This this particular ghost seemed to find a kinship with her mm -hmm. over that. Sure. So I don't feel like it was malevolent or, you know, threatening. I think it just, it knew that information, but it also, you know, kind of let it slip that it knew that. And that's kind of scary. It's an interesting and disturbing thought. Well, that's what we're here for. That's what we do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like that. Jeff writes in, this took place outside of Dallas, Texas in 2004. Myself, my, or my, uh, myself, my wife, and two children had just moved to the Dallas area and found a house ready for rent. Beautiful house in a great area of town. I was working the normal 65-hour week and very involved in church and living the dream. But two weeks after moving into the house, I was on the phone talking with a friend that was a pastor. He kept stopping in mid-sentence and laughing at me. He finally said, are you going to talk to them or me? He was frustrated. Kept hearing another person talking. I finally said, I have no idea what you're talking about. It's just me on the phone, and I'm the only person in the room. I laughed it off as being a bad connection. But a week after, my wife and I were out on the back porch enjoying the weather, and bam, we heard a noise. I run into the house and find a broken light fixture in the bathroom. It had just fallen and broke. I replaced the fixture a week later, and it fell and broke again. My wife said, this house is haunted, and all this crazy stuff keeps happening. I laughed and said, no, it's not. The very next day, I'm playing Xbox in the living room. 
I get ticked off because I couldn't get through the level I was playing, turned off the TV and the game console, neatly roll the cord around the controller, place it on top of the console, and go outside for a smoke. My wife walks out to join me and starts complaining that I'm a very messy person. I ask what she means and she starts saying how messy I left the Xbox. I walk in and the Xbox controller is lying in the middle of the room with the cord fully extended. At this point I have chills down my spine because either I'm losing my mind or something is wrong in this house. But another week goes by with nothing. My wife and I are lying in bed watching TV and my wife says, There she goes again, huh? I said, who are you talking about? My wife says that she has seen an older lady with white hair and a nightgown walk down our hallway every night for the past week. You didn't mention this why? My wife said at first she thought she was seeing things and thought she was losing it. I got out of bed and ran to the hallway and nothing was there. I told my wife, yeah, you are losing it. There's nothing wrong in the house. And that very second, the bathroom door closes on its own. I felt like I was about to faint from the surprise of this. The next morning, I called the pastor to please come over right away. He showed up, and I explained everything that had happened. He walked around the house, and only after about 10 minutes, he said, You have no idea what took place in this house over the years, and sometimes you're better off to move and get away from it. I thanked him and explained that I really couldn't afford to move at this time. I'm in panic mode after hearing this. A few days later, my wife and I are in the living room talking, with my back to the sliding glass door. I, for whatever reason, felt like someone was watching me just like someone looking over your shoulder. For some reason, I look across the room to the mirror hanging on the wall and there's a reflection from the, si the sliding glass door behind me. It's a man with a handlebar mustache. There are no eyes, just dark recesses. He is partially bald. He's wearing a white shirt and a brown vest and his body stops at the waist. I quickly turn around to get a glimpse of him, still there, standing in the sliding door. After the time it takes me to blink, he was gone. I felt sick, but more than that, I felt like I had been warned to leave. We moved less than a week later. I think sometimes it's better to not know and to just go. What the actual story was? Yeah, especially if you have somebody who maybe can tell that there's something bad that happened. Mm -hmm. Maybe not press for details because you can't unhear certain things. That's true. Jenny, by the way, is doing research right now. On what? To make sure that uh, whatever home we end up uh, in, in Branson. Oh my God. I is not haunted. Just about to say that's my fear of some like white puffy headed old lady in a nightgown wandering <laughs> our halls. Because, you know, Branson's kind of an, a community with. Uh, there's, there's an older population. There's an older population. So sure. a lot of the homes we look at belonged to older people. Mm hmm. So, yeah, we'll get the granny ghost. So there's a little bit of concern there because statistically and logistically, you could be looking at a home where someone had passed it. And well, if they would passed in it, it's off the grid. I'm done. Even if it was just a peaceful, there were nice old people who baked cookies and had cats. Nope. I'm done. If I know somebody died on the property, I'm done. Well, hopefully you get accurate information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's why I say sometimes it's nice to not know. But you know, if I don't get any weird vibes, it's probably yeah, probably all good. But I did Google search all the addresses that we really like mm -hmm. just to make sure there wasn't any news articles like, you know, man found dead after three weeks in a house or something like that. Sure. <laughs> just to make sure there's no horrible news stories. Like, oh, that's what that smell was. Yeah. <laughs> that really wasn't just, uh, you know, mothballs. That was someone uh, who was in here. Yeah. Because that, that, you can get some really horrible, horrible stories uh, as far as, you know, that sort of thing happening. There was one, um, it wasn't a death story, um, but it was a house in Wichita. And this was, um, I, I don't even, I don't believe it was an, an elder story either. It was, it was an actual news story, but it was disturbing as hell. Um, it was a, a couple, and I don't know what their deal was, Um I'm going to guess there was probably um, some sort of, you know, illness going on here for this event to occur. Okay. But it was a couple. They they lived in this house together, um, uh, or undiagnosed anyway, uh, illness, um, and they, like, never left, um, or, or at least one of them didn't leave in at least, I believe it was, like, four to five years. Uh-huh. And uh, the, I believe it was the wife uh, when 
finally like one of the neighbors called the police saying you got to like do a wellness check on these people there, there's something not right here um they found that she literally this is a news story i remember it on the news from here yes from here i i i remember it being read at the radio station and i just going well that's only in in kansas or only in wichita that this is going to happen um a uh the woman actually was sitting on the toilet for literally it was like four to five years oh i remember that melded herself to the toilet because yeah. eventually when you don't move from a chair for that long and i don't know how you wouldn't die i wouldn't like how you would have a stroke a clot or something yeah taking you out um somehow she survived um but she was on the toilet for that long and her skin literally grafted itself to the seat yeah that was uh there was a lot of mental illness going on oh of there. course but i don't believe any of it was ever diagnosed or treated and it was just the the they just kept it there yeah in this house I and remember scary that. story and i don't know what happened after i believe she wasn't dead um that they were she was alive yeah i don't know what happened after that you know I'm, i was just i don't i wonder how would your body react after that after you you probably can't just stand up and move no i mean you need physical therapy or something i would think so but i would wonder once you start getting movement if that would then cause like clots to move or because they would have to have built up after that amount of time wouldn't it i would think so but i, I mean know. i don't i don't know yeah. there's some kind of i mean that's some kind of abuse there oh completely yeah i mean just a horrible horrible story but uh one it was just it, it was it sounded like a horror movie it's like how really seriously yeah so so reason 597 to leave wichita <laughs> <laughs> I think it's it's right around there. Right around so, there. There you go. Uh, Penny writes in, I uh, want to share my first ghost story. The podcast I heard about the uh, shadow person visiting the children when, we were, uh, when they were sleeping is almost the same story I have. My two sisters and I shared a bedroom. They were in a double bed, and I was in a single bed at the end of their bed. When I was about 9 or 10, I was woken up, and standing in front of my face was a spirit in the shape of a man, but glowing entirely in blue light. I was very scared to see this, and I heard the word uh, telepathically, close your eyes and open them again, and you'll see that I'm still here, and you'll believe that I am real. I will not hurt you. I closed my eyes to open them, and of course, the blue man was still standing there. I felt nothing but peace and calm coming from him. He only said, now go back to sleep. Everything is okay. I closed my eyes and went back to sleep, not thinking too much more of it. I never told anyone about it, and I don't remember feeling scared immediately the next day. As I grew up, I often wondered if that really happened. It felt so real, but I was so young. When I was in my early 20s, my sisters and I were talking about ghost stories, and I said, well, I'll tell you about this blue man I saw when I was a child. My sisters both froze. They said, you saw the blue man too? Well, one sister was scared and covered her head. The, younger, the youngest sister would wait up for this blue man and would see him often. She said that he would go between our parents' room and ours through the closet. He'd say things to her like, Why are you still up? You should be in bed. We all thought it was our grandfather. He was a kind man, but we did not remember him very much. We also found out later that the previous owner of the house had died before we bought the house. Either way, the spirit was kind. I bet she wished she had told her sisters when she was a lot younger. Yeah. You know, that might have been something they could have not been afraid of all three of them and i bet details would have been a little more readily available yeah or 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 you know me and pull it back up and say oh yeah, i remember this remember that rather it being so far mm -hmm. so far in the past i'm guessing the blue is just kind of the aura of him yeah it really you know he wasn't a, a blue man group type member he was just that's how he the the light that he was projecting the translucence yeah yeah, yeah. Neat story. Mm -hmm. And uh, what an interesting bonding moment to have with a relative. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we bonded over dead people. Aaron writes in, hey guys, as I write this in, I'm also listening to an episode and getting very scared. You make my walk to work pass quickly, a bit like a time slip. Wanted to share this story as it concerns someone effectively switching off their medium abilities. Please note this happened to someone I know and not to me. One night my friend had a dream. In this dream, a girl laid on a wet stone in a dark place, crying and asking for help. On waking, he felt physically shaken and upset. The new, uh, this wasn't, he knew this just wasn't a dream, but a cry for help, as he had abilities to sense and see spirits. 
He had no idea what to do. All he knew was this girl was in trouble somewhere. Every night after this first dream, he had the same dream, but each time the girl was more and more insistent, screaming for help. She'd scream, I'm alive. But he could only watch the scene over and over again as no one would believe him and he had no proof of anything. Eventually, this episode came to an end when the girl's body was found down a well near to where he lived. She'd been dead from when the dream started. He was so upset by how this played out that he turned his back on the spirit world and by sheer force of will got rid of his abilities and has sworn never to use them again. Thought this might interest you. Cheers, Aaron. Well, but the thing is, the dreams started from the time she was dead. Mm -hmm. Chances are he wasn't picking up on her cries for help while she was alive. Mm -hmm. This might have been a confused spirit who didn't realize she was dead. I agree. And so it, it's not that he let this girl die. It's just he wasn't able to, you know, put the picture together. Sure. It was more so, here's what happened. Uh -huh. I hope you understand. It's not so much... Please come save me because that time had passed before he was ever yeah. into the picture. Thank you for uh, for sharing that experience. The number here is 855-853-4802 to share your real ghost story with us. If you're not an EPP yet, please consider becoming one. This show is completely funded by you guys. We don't have a, a big radio station or corporation backing this show uh, or anything of that nature. It's uh, It's two people sitting in a room with some computers sharing ghost stories. Yeah. And a dog sitting at our feet. Yes. And that's that's pretty much it. Uh, so without you guys supporting the show and uh, keeping it going, we could not do it. Uh, that's all we ask. If you like what we do, five bucks a month, and we give you bonus stuff too. It's not just, hey, thanks for the money. Enjoy the free stuff. Because we'll always have the free stuff, but we always want to give extra to our EPPs. Every, every EPP gets a bonus episode with our best stories in it. Uh, only for EPPs every week. Almost 100 of those episodes now. Get access to all of them when you're an EPP. Exclusive video content, the episodes of Seeing Ghosts, and a whole lot of other uh, exclusives as we continue to create them and invent them. So lots of uh, extras there for only five bucks a month. And like I said, you get the satisfaction of knowing you're a part of keeping this thing on the air. You can sign up to be an EPP up on our uh, EPP website, which is ghostpodcast.com. That's ghostpodcast.com. Dot com. Joe writes in, hi guys, I'm from Ontario, Canada. Yes, California, not oh, <laughs> Ontario, Cal Jeez, it's a Freudian slip there. Yeah. I'm from Ontario, California. Yes, California, not Canada. I've always had a special place in my heart for the paranormal and most definitely believe in ghosts. I've always felt like I was a little more aware of the energy around me. Not that I've seen anything, but more like just know where there may be another presence near. These occurrences happen more frequently in my dreams. I've always had lucid dreams, even as a kid. I can honestly say I have had lucid dreams about almost every night and actually remember them. One time I had a dream where there was this big party taking place on my porch. Now, my porch really isn't that big. It could probably fit about eight people, and that's pushing it, so nowhere near the size for a party. Anyway, my cousin had hosted it. And he had invited all his friends. Everybody was having a great time except for one guy who was sitting in the corner. I walked up to him and realized it was a friend of my cousin's. This friend had been in a car accident and had fallen into a, into a coma for two, week, for two uh, months way back. I asked him, what's the matter, dude? Are you okay? He was holding his head and replied he had felt awful and his head was pounding. Right then I woke up from my dream and like every morning I looked at my phone. I got a text from that same cousin in my dream telling me he was going to host a party in honor of the one-year anniversary that his friend had woken up from a coma. Now, to me, that seems like way too much of a coincidence. This next story has to do with one of my longtime friends passing away August 23rd of 2015. I was devastated when I heard the news. It was like a piece of my heart had died. I'd done him for 18 years, and you never think in a million years your friend would leave so soon. Been about two weeks after that I had a dream that I was with another one of my close friends and his neighbor. We had all gotten together to mourn our friend. I was standing in front of my friend and the neighbor. My friend was on the left in front of me, sitting down at the neighbor, was on the right standing up. Next to my friend was an empty chair. In my dream, I had taken a quick glance at the chair and saw my friend who had passed sitting there, but when I looked again, he was gone. 
I looked up at my friend to tell him what I had seen. To my surprise, he had also seen him. When we both went to talk about it, I felt a cold chill on my left shoulder. When I turned to my friend who had passed, he was standing right there. He put his arm around me and said, I'm okay, man. We shared a simple smile together, and I woke up. That's just one of the dreams I had about my friend. There's two more. Hope you guys enjoyed these. I don't know if I'm a little sensitive or not, but whatever it is, I'm glad I have it. Jenny, you can edit this however you want. Tony, the jokes are awesome. <laughs> Never stop making these podcasts. Thanks, Joe. I would say more than a little sensitive. If you're yeah. able to have almost premonition type experiences mm -hmm. with the first part of the story, then I would think you're probably having visitations in your dreams. I agree. I think he's one of those people where, you know, he has it naturally. And if he were to focus in it and hone in on it, he could actually be even more, even better at it, if you will, mm -hmm. or, or more accurate with it on, on sensing things and picking things up and accu accurately saying what they are. Yeah. So I think because he naturally has that. Mm -hmm. That ability with some focus, it could improve even more. Thank you for that one. Luke, my story happened around four years ago. I was on a school trip for four nights and five days to France. We stayed in a really big hotel. I'll politely say that I'm not going to mention the hotel's name. The experience happened on the fourth day of the trip, as uh, in I woke up to feeling ill and took the day off from the adventure in France. Teacher woke up to feeling ill too, so I wasn't by myself. Took a long nap throughout the day and woke up at three o'clock and went downstairs and grabbed some lunch. Took the flight upstairs, got to start unpacking as it was our last full day. Eventually I went to bed and the day was over. Woke up feeling great. We had to get up at 3 a.m. as we had been home for a 10 a.m. back in England. I took my bag downstairs, remembering I left the plate in my room. They told me to get it and put it in the kitchen, so I did. I went to the kitchen and I couldn't see the people, but the lights were on and I could hear dishes and people talking and I shouted to them I'm gonna leave my plate here they responded with yeah sure I'll get it later and they said bye it's been nice meeting you one of the maids replied you too bye went outside and the man started to lock the door I stopped him and said don't people are still in there he replied no sorry you were the last one out I said I just spoke to someone they're in there you can go and look for me he went to look and came back and said sorry kid there's no one there to this day, I still don't know who I spoke to. Could there have been another door in there? Maybe. But I'm thinking it's probably one door in, one door out kind of situation. Mm -hmm. Are you kind of like the where we were wondering who wandered through our hotel room? Yeah. And we're like, wait a second, there's nobody here. Yeah. I could see that being a possibility. Yeah. Um, but, but, but if that's not, mm -hmm. then you had a very polite ghost. So there you go. Either a ghost... <laughs> If there was no other exit to the room, uh, or it could have been just housekeeping if they had like a side entrance or exit or something. Right. There you go. <laughs> Casey writes in, in the 90s, my family rented a home while in the uh, transition from one town to another. My mother, brothers, and I would hear screams from the basement. It seemed to only happen when my dad was out of the house. My father was in the Air Force and gone overseas a lot, so my mother kept her poker face after we heard screams so we wouldn't freak out. During one of my dad's deployments, my mother took us to a movie and dinner. As we pulled up to the house, my mother noticed all the lights were on in the house. She stopped and watched the house for a minute but didn't see any movement. My mother hit the garage door button and then all at once, every light was turned off. She played it off like a popped a breaker. We pulled in the garage, got out of the car, and a single file with my mom in front of us walked into the house. We were about five steps into the house and heard as if a large glass bowl was smashed right in front of us. The sound was so loud my ears rang for a few seconds. My mother turned 180 degrees and pushed us out of the house through the garage and before I knew it, we were in our neighbor's living room across the street. As my mom explained what happened, our 87-year-old neighbor was checking out of the house. He checked the basement main floor and all windows were locked and secure with no broken glass to be found we all went home and stayed in my mom's room but didn't hear a peep the rest of the night while we lived in this rental home the sounds happened on and off we moved the sound stopped love the show casey i think sometimes that's why it's a rental because they <laughs> just can't keep anybody there nobody knows why or what's up 
with all the turnover, but how, how would how would a potential buyer know? You ask the neighbors. I mean, when we were selling this sure. house, we had a lot of people wander over to our next door neighbor to ask about different things. That's true. So you could you could do that and then find it very hard to sell. And I'm sure realtors maybe talk. Sure. I could see that. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to put someone in the house that's likely going to have some issue with it. And yeah. That's true. I don't believe our neighbors ever got asked the ghost question, though. No, our house isn't that old no. where anybody even thinks of it. Not that a new house can't have a ghost, but, mm-hmm. you know, that's not something in this neighborhood that comes to mind. Sure. It, it, it would have been like, is there any ghosts? No, but they tell ghost stories for a living. <laughs> <laughs> they do what? Yeah. yeah, we took our ghost stuff down for we. Showed the house. I did. Because when people came into the office, I mean, this, the office here could be used as, as a man cave. It could be used as an office. It could be used as really anything. Um, but we obviously, we had a lot of stuff up in here. If you guys have seen any of the videos, uh, the big signs and the, the logos for the show and graphics. And uh, I thought, yeah, probably should take that down for showings. Yeah. Just because the average person finds like, what the hell? Are they devil worshiping in the garage? And that's probably exactly where it would have gone. Especially knowing the attitudes of some of the, the, the local people. Yeah, the area wouldn't have even been like explainable. No. I mean, there's people that we've met here that, you know, got to kind of know us and know we, we weren't worshiping the devil. Yeah. <laughs> we just told ghost stories and then had normal lives um, that were still kind of like, well, we don't we don't think we should associate with them. Yeah, well. They tell ghost stories. Yeah. We've got to where we, we don't tell that as, <laughs> what do you do? Oh, we have a ghost podcast. Yeah. No. That only comes out later if we've gotten to know you and we trust you. Far too much explaining to do. I, I will say the nice thing now about doing this uh, podcast, though, and not working at a radio station anymore, is I don't get asked the other two questions that I always got asked. Was yeah. uh, from a lot of people who just wanted to be your friends for like getting stuff. It was like always, oh, can you get me concert tickets? Or, or not so much anymore. But can you get me like some free CDs? Right. That was all I got throughout high school. Because people, I still find I didn't have a whole lot of friends because I didn't trust anybody. Yeah. That's all people wanted was like, good concert tickets and a free CD or something, you know, and that's uh, like, <laughs> no, no, you can't because you're an asshole to me. Pretty much every point up, every day up until the point of you realized what I did. Yeah. So, yeah, no, the answer is no. And then I'd be locked in the locker banging my way out. Well, I, I never got locked in a locker. It's not fair for our kids, though, because they can't tell what we do. No. Because their parents are like, oh, we don't want our child playing with their child. Sure, well, they just say they, they, they're in broadcasting, yeah. which is accurate because, I mean, this is, if you were to divide my day up, you know, into tenths or something, it's like one-tenth of my day. Yeah. The other part, I'm making ads for car dealerships and well, what they, what have you. Parents just need to come over and check out the new pen, pentagram. So. Exactly. The yeah. new... Uh, <laughs> our new bunk bed exhibit and uh, also we're not doing the zach bagans thing where he's uh collecting possessed shit no no that would be kind of creepy although it would be really fun uh for one of the girls to give you uh, an annabelle doll for your birthday i have an annabelle original <laughs> type doll uh-huh. and it's got red nail polish on it from olivia <laughs> so it looks like it's covered in blood it does it's terrible. <laughs> and it has no dress, so it's this naked raggedy Ann with red all over it. You know what we should do? We should just totally take that doll and put it in a glass case in the next office. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and just put the sign Annabelle underneath it. And then when people come and visit, like, oh my God, is this the real thing? Like, yeah, it is. I, I don't know. That might be <laughs> tempting too much. That would be funny. Wyatt writes in, hey guys, my name's Wyatt. I just started listening to you guys about a month ago. Found you on YouTube, just looking for something to listen to at work. Anyway, so my friend's grandmother passed away about three days ago. She had brain cancer. Over the last few months, she had needed a lot of care for her family. I'd be over at my friend's about two or three times a week to hang out. Every time I was there, I would say hi to her, and she would walk around and see me quite a bit. As she got worse and began to have delusions and forget a lot of stuff, a few times she even thought I was one of her grandchildren. While she was in her room, she would watch the Andy Griffith show a lot. I could tell by the theme. So for the weekdays, I got up at 3 a.m. to get ready for work. I was getting ready in the shower. I was hearing like a faint whistling sound that sounds kind of like the theme from the Andy Griffith show. But I thought I was just imagining it since I was still kind of waking up or it might have just been stuck in my head. But as I was getting dressed, I heard the glass candy dish that's been on my kitchen counter clink as if someone had flicked it or moved it. 
I looked out of my bedroom to see if it was my brother, but I didn't see anyone there. I live in my parents' house, but they're gone on a trip from their anniversary. The only other one in the house is my little brother who had school in three hours, so I doubted he'd be up. Figure I might have just imagined it was, uh, it, imagined it, but it was pretty a distinct sound. We've never had anything paranormal happen in this house for the five years we've lived here. Do you think it's possible for my friend's grandmother to be haunting me, or maybe it could have just been my way or my imagination? Anyway, love the show. Keep it up. Hope to become an EPP as soon as I get some money in. Thank you for reading my story, even though it could possibly be nothing more than my imagination. Have a good night. It could be. I mean, it's it's just hard to know why. I mean, she may be just confused. Mm -hmm. And unless she really went around whistling the theme from Andy Griffith. Griff, I can't say. Griffith? I mean, I don't know that maybe it's it's not just... That gets stuck in your head. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody gets stuff stuck in their head all the time to the point where you swear you can hear it. I've had that. Yeah. Yeah. Especially at odd hours when you're up that early, you can think you're hearing a lot of stuff. I mean, I remember there was times when I was doing the morning show and I would wake up and I'm in the shower uh, or I'm getting out of the shower and I can, a lot of times I turn my TV on mm -hmm. in the bedroom right out there and I'd have just like the morning news on and, you know, you're so kind of groggy at that moment. I mean, there was times I, I just forget to turn it on and I'd be in the shower or I'd be getting out and I'd think I was hearing the news. Mm -hmm. And then I walk out in my living room or my bedroom and my TV's not even on. Yeah. But I could swear it was like the newscast. It was just such a conditioned thing. And I was such in an odd state that, you know, so it's hard to say on that one. Yeah, I, I would just advise not going and telling your friend that you think your friend's grandmother is going around getting into your candy and whistling mm -hmm. around your house that it's just too soon yeah someone did send me uh, recently a statue of Andy Griffith which does exist in his hometown and I couldn't tell you where it was I don't remember <laughs> but it's not Admiral Nimitz <laughs> it's not Admiral Nimitz no <laughs> if you're just joining us uh, we were in uh, in Texas not that long ago Fredericksburg in Fredericksburg Texas and uh, there was a statue and I'm like Oh, is this Andy Griffith's hometown? Because I thought it looked a lot like Andy Griffith. No, not at all. No. But it, there is an Andy Griffith statue. Okay. So there you go. And I figured probably in his hometown there's one. Sure. He's not dressed like the Admiral either. He looks like Andy Griffith. But uh, there you go. <laughs> thought we'd answer that for you. Thank you for uh, sending me that, by the way. D writes in, hi, Tony and Jenny. My story happened around six years ago. My grandmother, who was suffering from dementia, was living in a nursing home. She was healthy, even though she didn't know any of us. Around two weeks before she died, I started having a dream where I was at my grandmother's old house. She hadn't lived there since I was about 15. I'm now 44. In the dream, I heard someone knocking at the front door. When I opened the door, it was my grandfather at the front door. He died when I was 10. I say to him in the dream that I have come to take Nan on a ride with me and, give, uh, and gave me a kiss on the head. Woke up the next morning. My grandmother was admitted to the hospital. In less than two weeks, she died. Second time this happened to me was almost 18 months ago. I started dreaming that my dad's father, who had died 10 years ago, was standing at a train station. In the dream, I walked up to him and said, Hi, Pop. What are you doing? He told me he was buying a ticket for my dad. I asked, Could I go on the train with them? And he told me, No, I cannot go for a long time. Woke up two days later, and my dad, who had uh, end-stage Parkinson's disease, was admitted to the hospital with pneumonia and sadly died less than a week later. The day he died, my mom and my daughter went home while they were at home. He started reaching out saying, Hi, Dad. He fell asleep for a while, and I must have nodded off again. I had the dream of my grandfather at the train station, but this time my dad was standing there with him. He told me, Don't be sad, sweetie. I'll take care of him. I woke up out of the dream, and not 30 seconds later, he passed away. Keep up the awesome work, D from Sydney. I'd like to think that's how it is for everybody, that you have somebody familiar that you've cared about who's already passed on that comes back to take you to the other side. You just hope they have enough money for the fare. Because if they're having to buy the ticket, uh -huh. if that's part of the process, what happens if they don't have the money? The ghost money. Okay. The ghost dollars. Yeah, because there's ghost money. <laughs> he's buying a ticket. He's He's just... Or is it more of a symbolic it's thing? It's a symbolic thing. Okay. Yeah. 
like taking Nan for a ride. Okay. Are they really going to go for a ride? No. That's what you tell a child. Okay. So it's like being translated into our terms yeah. of what's going on. Yeah. Just trying to make it less, you know, upsetting. Sure. That makes sense. So, no, it's not like you really need to buy a ticket to die. Got to use your ghost visa. Right. It's everywhere you want to be. Even in death. <laughs> That's like the new end of the commercial. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Even in death. That's great. Be great. 855-853-4802 is our phone number here at Real Ghost Stories Online. Adam writes in, I was seven years old, an American living in Germany. I'm now 35 and will never forget about this. And I'm about to explain. We lived in a military suburb, me and my older brother and parents, outside of Lindsay Air Force Base, at the time, 1987 to 1991, in a base-like apartment complex. I had my own room, my parents' room next to mine, and my brother's room next over. My parents have had this long rectangular dresser, three drawers across, three drawers down, with a vanity mirror attached for uh, longer than I can remember. I say this because they still have it up to this day, and I still see it whenever I go into their uh, house. It hasn't changed at all, meaning the last drawer on the top right has always been the junk drawer. When I was in Germany at age seven, I reached into that junk drawer. I really don't remember if I was sneaking into it or not or looking for something with permission. And we're pulling out a chain, like a fan chain, with two military dog tags on it. I held them and glanced at them for a few seconds and thought about how awesome it was to hold some real dog tags. Wow! To myself. These dog tags were scorching hot to the touch. I mean, I had to fling them down on the floor and throw my hand back. That's how hot they were. I was only seven at the time, and nobody in my family had died yet, military or non-military. I had my entire family, grandparents, and all were still alive and well, and were loving and close to us as family. So how did these dog tags scorch my hand, and whose were they? These are questions I've thought about periodically since then, but at the time, after my hand was scorched and I flung these dog tags down, I picked them up by the chain and put them back in the drawer, and of course, never told my parents about what I experienced. Why were those dog tags scorching hot when I grabbed them? Where are they now? I really never know. I think maybe something didn't want you messing with them, and the quickest way to get you to put it down and not touch it is to make it really hot. Sure. And just, like, don't play with this. This is not a toy. This is special. I, why can't he ask now? I would ask. That's my, I mean... Yeah. What do you got to lose? I mean, I, I tell my parents all sorts of shit I did when I was a kid. Yeah. Like, man, when you were gone, I uh, decided I was going to make a delicious uh, concoction of uh, soy sauce, Kool-Aid, lemon juice, and uh, V8. Good grief. I was just like, I'm going to mix all this stuff together and see what sort of punch I can come up with. Did you drink that? I took a sip and then dumped it down the drinks. It was horrible. I yeah. never I never experimented with, like, I'm going to try my parents' alcohol. I never did that because okay. it just smelled god-awful to me. Yeah. Um, but uh, I tried just with other things like mm -hmm. like that like soy sauce and v8 and whatever else liquid yeah. i could find that wasn't you know, like a chemical uh -huh. of any sort um yeah, and i do all sorts of fun stuff like making hot dogs on the burner yeah i remember you telling me about that lots of lots of experimentation mm -hmm. in the uh, in the kitchen back in the day and some of it they, they knew about some of it they didn't but hey go back you're an adult now say hey i'm just curious this is an experience i had it's really bizarre can you shine any light on this yeah, somebody would know. And and you're going to get one or two reactions of, I have no idea what you're talking about, or, oh my God. And then you're going to get some really amazing story mm -hmm. that you're going to have to turn around and share with us. That's right. So that's, that's the rule. That's how that's going to go. So go and ask and then get back to us. That's your assignment for this week. Uh, wraps up uh, this episode of Real Ghost Stories Online. If you like our show, please help us stay on the air, become an EPP extra podcast person five bucks is all it is each month where you can sign up for a full year get one month free get all those bonus episodes of the show almost a hundred of them now best episodes we got all the exclusive bonus content video content and more go to ghostpodcast.com ghostpodcast.com click become an epp and help keep us on the air check it out until next time for jenny brewski i'm tony brewski thanks for listening to another episode of real ghost stories online